So we are back with a little more Kershaw Dental CS 3D Imaging Education. Uh, this video we're going to be talking all about mapping the nerve. We're actually going to have three different techniques or show three different techniques for mapping the nerve. First we'll cover it from the uh, cross-sectional views. Next we'll cover more of the traditional method from the panoramic curve. And then lastly we'll cover mapping the nerve from the axial views. There's really no wrong answer on which way you do it as long as you get the results that you want and need. Uh, there are some pros and cons of each one, so let's get to it! All right, so we're going to start with uh, what I feel is, is likely a, a less common approach for mapping the nerve, but, um, but it is more accurate. Um, it takes a little bit more time to do, which is probably why a lot don't do it. Uh, but we're going to map it from the actual cross-sectional slices. Um, if you map it from the cross-sectional slices, it's going to be more accurate uh, only because you see both the inferior superior position and the buccal lingual position. If you're mapping it through the more traditional method by mapping it on the panoramic curve, then your inferior superior position you can see more clearly, but it's a little bit more challenging to map it exactly in the best position um, from a buccal lingual perspective. And then lastly, if you map it in the axial slice, which we'll go through uh, last, then it's going to be more accurate from a buccal lingual position, but the inferior superior position will be a little bit less accurate because you have to slice through and you have to actually, as you're slicing axially, um, it's trying to find that exact position. So we're going to do all three. And one thing that I've taught uh, users is that if you see the nerve so clearly in the cross-sectional views, as you're slicing through and the bone's super dense and the nerve just jumps out at you, um, you know, you could ask yourself, why even bother mapping the nerve? If it's that clear, let me just take my measurements, plant my implant, and go from there. Uh, but sometimes it's not as clear, and sometimes you get your trabecular bone patterns where it's it's kind of disappears a little bit into the bone, and you're not really sure where it is. But if you follow it from the foramen, it is easier to then find. So you don't really need to map it if it's that clear, like I said, unless you want to do it for show and tell purposes with your patients or whatever the case may be. If you want to, you want to, go for it. Um, but sometimes it isn't as clear. But if I follow it, then it can make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to select my nerve mapping tool. If you wanted to start outside the bone, you can. And I'm just going to begin making my series of clicks. And now I'm just going to start slicing and then make another click in the center and so on. And I can see the cortication of the nerve as I go to make sure that you're clicking it uh, in the center as much as possible. You can also see how the nerve is kind of impinging on the lingual cortex there. And I'm going to keep on slicing through, make another series of clicks, and so on. Now, obviously, you don't have to map the nerve all the way through from foramen to foramen, of course. You just need to do it where you're planting the implants, unless you really wanted to map the entire thing, but that's up to you. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. I'm just kind of mapping it all the way through for the most part, okay? And you don't have to click every, you know, just couple of scrolls. I'm actually scrolling several times with my mouse wheel before I make my next click, all right? So you don't have to do that many clicks. Um, because it fills it in as you go. And it fills in the entire nerve, of course. All right, and that's good for now. Let's just come double click, and we can see we've mapped the entire thing. All right, if I go to my cross-sectional views, we can look at how we did, see our foramen, and we can see everything really nicely. And, and it's not just the inferior superior perspectives that are going to be accurate when you map it this way, but also the buccal lingual. And I'll show you the difference with the other two techniques. And by the way, in that last example, I actually clicked a lot. There were a lot of dots that I clicked or created 
to create my nerve. You don't need that many. I want to do one more time, illustrate doing that again with a lot less dots. So here we go. And there you have it. So in this example, we used a lot less dots to create our nerve. Uh, it creates it just the same and fills in beautifully just the same. And when we look at our cross-sectional uh, views, we can see we've got a really nice, accurate nerve mapping. All right, next up, let's cover mapping the nerve in the more traditional way that we see quite often is mapping in the panoramic curve. So I'm going to delete this current nerve. And uh, mapping in this way, actually, uh, I showed in, a, in an earlier video is uh, implant planning part one. Um, I'll post that above. And we're going to change this to our thinnest slice. And we're going to go from zoom to slide. And before you even begin mapping the nerve, if you're mapping it, really any of the views that you're mapping in, just as a reminder, scroll through it. Scroll through it and look where the nerve travels. Look where it goes before you start clicking. I see this too often where everyone starts clicking right away and they're clicking it like through this area right here where it's clearly not clear. And we want to really make sure that we scroll and see where it goes before you even begin to click. Okay, that's going to be a helpful little tip if you're not doing that already. So let's do the same thing. Let's begin at our foramen and I'll map uh, the left side this time and we'll select our nerve mapping tool and again this is really more of the traditional method it's a little bit faster but I'll, so, I'll show you kind of why it might not be as accurate which of course you can fix it and you can make it just as accurate it's just that the initial mapping you might be off a little bit from a buccal lingual perspective so if we want to do the same thing just for kicks I'm going to do single click single click I'm going to bring my mouse over here, and now I can see where I actually started to click out at the uh, foramen, and I'm going to scroll. And again, before I start clicking, I want to see where I'm going. All right, and I can do my next click where I'm connecting it, and so on. Click, and again, go back and forth a little bit. You want to click it at the most radiolucent or the least dense area because that's going to be closest to the actual center of the nerve from a buccal lingual perspective okay and that's what we're trying to find and that's where it becomes a little bit more challenging is to click on that exact buccal lingual perspective and we're done okay but like i said earlier as i look at my dots i'm scrolling and checking for accuracy and in this case Okay, I'm off a little bit too far lingually. Is, it, is that that big of a deal? Probably not, okay? Probably not, you have a good idea where it is, but I just want you to understand the differences of mapping it one way versus the other. My height should be pretty dead on, and you can see over here, I veered a little bit too much to the buckle, um, which if I can fix it, if I wanted to, I can drag that little dot over, but you know, you don't have to. So. The height should be accurate because I see the height just fine here. It's the buccal lingual perspective that might be off doing it on the panoramic curve. Okay, and lastly, let's do it from the axial view. And um, I, I usually don't do it this way at all. Personally, I think it's a little bit more challenging. You guys might find it super easy. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever works for you. So we'll show you how to do this and then um, you guys can play around with all the different options and see which way you like to do it best. But um, I think it's it's a little bit more challenging for me only because where the nerve is traveling, you can kind of see at the frame and we're a little bit more superior, then it's gonna drop down, okay? And then go back up superiorly in the posterior. So it kind of starts um, higher, drops down lower, and then goes back up. But, uh, but we'll go through it and you guys can try for yourself. And 
let's go ahead and check our work a little bit. So as I go through, the the buckle lingual perspective should be um, should be accurate mapping it this way. It's the inferior superior position of the nerve that might be off a little bit because when you're in your axial slice, you're trying to map it dead center from an inferior superior position. All right, it's the reverse of mapping in the panoramic curve. Okay, so we can see here we're a little bit far uh, uh, inferior, which again, it might, might be fine, might not be fine. It all depends on how accurate you wanna be. Um, as long as you can kind of see you know, where you are, you should be okay. But I just wanna illustrate the differences of the two options. So I was a little bit too inferior there as well. So I think you get the point of this and what the differences are at this point in time. So I hope all of this stuff is helpful. Feel free to comment, ask questions below. We'll see you later.